Okay, guys, welcome back for part two. I apologize again for having two parts, but it's the only way I can get the entire process in. Okay, so we're going to texture some Gopi Souffle poppy seed that's rolled out on a number two. I'm just going to texture it with my favorite sandpaper, which is the Van Fandeli. Get this on Amazon. It's really good sandpaper. And I'm using the 120 grit. Okay. You can see. okay. So I have this cutter here that I'm going to use to um, <clears throat> make the bail. Well, I'm thinking about making a two-part bail for it, so we'll see. No, a two-piece, I meant to say, but no, actually, we are making a two-piece for it. Yes. Oh. Well, this clay is so sticky. Let me get this out. I just did that a minute ago and had no problems with it sticking. Either it pulls out on its own or I have to cut it out, which is fine. Put some liquid clay on it. Let me make sure that you guys are okay, able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to mess around with it till I get it like together like it needs to be. I'm going to push it down. So if you do this this way, just keep adjusting it and pushing it together in the spots that need to be pushed together. <laughs> Okay, now I was thinking about putting some string along here. It broke. <laughs> okay, let me extrude. Never mind these. Okay, then I'm going to cut it in half. Probably could even cut, yeah. Well, hold on one second. Be my luck that I do that, and then I need. Okay, I'm gonna cut it in half again just because. A little bit more than half because when it hangs down, it makes it heavier for me to mess around with. It gets in the way. Okay, so then I'm gonna take some liquid clay. Missing this extra piece that I need up. <laughs> and then I'm going to take some more liquid clay. Whoops. And spill along, along right here. like this. Of 
course, you can adjust it however you want it to sit on there. Okay, and then we're going to use, oh, I already put the liquid clay, duh. So then, cut some of this off. And... Angle it again. It's hard to get it down in there when I'm using this silicone tool. There we go. And then take it along the edge to the other side. Some more liquid clay. I cannot believe how filthy my hands look. it up with the side, the top right here. Bring it out a little bit now that I'm done with that part. I try to zoom you on zoom you in on the parts I feel like you're not going to be able to see that well before I do editing because sometimes when you use the editor to do that it, it really messes it up and I've messed up a few videos doing that so if you're wondering what's up with that that's why okay so now I think that I want to put This green cabbage on there, maybe. Let's see what it looks like. Mm, or, um, let me, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. So, I have a black rhinestone here. I'm going to make a little cabbage on, or <laughs> bezel for it. So, you take some black. Or whatever color clay, but I'm going to make a little clay ball. Sorry, I'm going to make sure you guys can see. Then I'm going to use the end of my paintbrush. Just gonna push down, make a little pocket. I'm gonna take some liquid clay, put down in the bottom of there. Tweezers. Then you need the flat end of something to push it down in there. to make sure it sits level. Okay. Then, some liquid clay on the back.
going to use my silicone tool to adjust it. I was thinking about putting some texture on that bezel. And I have a smaller, if I can find it, smaller ball tool. It has like a very fine tip on the end. Hmm. wonder if this will work. Let's see if we can make a little texture in it. what it looks like guys okay so now I want to figure out what I want to do for color um, as far as mica, mica powder gilders paste I think I'm gonna do mica powder hmm let me figure this out and I'll be right back Okay guys, welcome back. So, I got a little ahead of myself. I forgot about the other bale. So I just have um, a piece of clay and I cut it out with this triangle cutter that I have. And then I have um, a texture. Um, it's a mold actually. Hold on, I'll show you. So this one. And I just pressed the piece right there piece of clay and I got this so what I'm going to do is this is going to be the top bail piece and now I got something on it hold on one second let me see if I can get it off okay Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so then I'm going to thin this out and it's going to go across the top of it like that. So I'll fold this in half till the ends touch flat together like that. And put a little bit of glue there, translucent. like that. I cannot believe how bad my hands look. I'm so sorry guys. There's no sense in me to keep washing them though because they're just going to keep getting filthy from the clay even though I've wiped them a hundred times. <laughs> okay. So we have that. Then I'm going to a little bit. Trim this up with my blade. Let's do like this. Like this first. I'm just going to take a little bit off of each side at first. I don't know how thin I want it yet.
geez when I want it to stick it doesn't when I don't want it to of course it's going to Let me put some liquid clay on the back of there. Oh, and by the way, the reason why that looks like that, I do have a trick for you guys. Um, I know sometimes when you use these molds and you, if you try to make something like this, when you try to push down in there, the clay gets stuck on your fingers. So if you use your soft tool or something like that and you use it to push down the back, you'll be able to get um, a nice impression without it sticking to to the back of your fingers and dragging it up doesn't matter which color I use you won't be able to see it so and I'm not going all the way down because some of that's going to get cut off so that's fine so then, I'll lay it down there. <laughs> See what I mean? Like, I can't get it to stick when I need it to. The minute I don't want it to stick somewhere. Oh, that's what's happening, buddy. <laughs> Actually, what? Right there. Okay. And you can adjust it. The liquid clay is like forgiving it'll let you like adjust it. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my knife. Actually, let me use my blade that might be better. I'm just going to go along the side, trim it off. <clears throat> Please forgive me for the my raspy voice and me keep uh, clearing my throat. I have a thyroid issue. I have nodules on my throat, so it causes me to have a hoarse voice I keep trying to clear my throat so you guys can hear me just out of <laughs> habit I guess okay so that's what that's gonna look like I'm so happy with this it's turning out really nice okay so now I need to put a little piece of clay on the back of there for the jump ring and also I decided on gold I'd like for it to look um, like a little bronzy, maybe. One second, let me adjust this really quickly. And I have to be able to hold it in front of my face so I can see. Okay, so now, oh, okay, the piece for the jump ring. So I have to, I have some gold. Yeah, we're going to do gold. I have some, um, is this gold? Let's see. No, this is brass, which, let me show you guys the color that I'm going to use. This is how I decide. <laughs> um... This is gilded gold, and then this is, I don't know what the color is, it's just a different gold that I have a mica, mica powder. I like the gilded gold, but I thought this one's a little brighter. Now I don't know. Now I think we'll go with this one. Okay, 
So, I'm going to use this to make a jump ring. Give me one sec and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. So I made a jump ring with that brass wire and these bow making pliers or looping pliers. They're, it's called both. <laughs> People call it both things. <laughs> okay, so I need a piece of clay. And I'm going to run it through on a number four, just a small piece like this. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's gonna be in the back. You won't be able to see it, so. And what I do is just cut like a little rectangle. Oh my gosh, I apologize. You guys can probably tell in this last in this video that my voice is hoarse, raspy. I haven't. I'm not on my game. I haven't been feeling my best today. So I apologize for that. Okay. So. Going to. Where did the jump ring go? Juice. Right in my eyeballs. So we'll set it there. And I'll put this across there like that. Okay. So, I just want to make sure I'm not smashing the front. Okay. That's why I like using already done um, cabochons. But then there's times that you don't want to use already done cabochons. So I just put a little bit of liquid clay right there at the opening the part where it comes together then I'm going to put some liquid clay on the back of this oh see it, it's been one of those days Okay, now I'm going to put my ring finger on the front of this cabochon and hold it with my thumb because I don't want to distort any of that string or any of the rope or anything that I worked really hard on. And I'm barely putting my finger right there between those so I'm not touching the rope or the string, whatever you want to call it. Just gonna use my needle tool to flatten it down, smooth it out. So I keep wanting to check the front to make sure I'm not distorting it. Okay. Okay, so I'm not gonna touch that anymore. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm gonna mess it up. So I'll just keep using my needle tool and rolling it across. <laughs> this doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look, you know, the absolute perfect. But just get it good enough to where it looks decent. Because some people, you know, some of your customers may... have an issue with the back looking bad. But if it's for yourself or someone that you know doesn't care, Okay. 
It's really hard to do this without touching the front. <laughs> oh, and I did. So I'm going to take my needle tool, try to fix it. That really gets annoying. I can't believe I did that. At least I was able to fix it. Okay, so I'm just going to keep trying to pull this down here to where I know there's at least a little bit of a seal, you know, not a little bit of seal, but to where it's sealed. And then you can use your needle tool to like flatten it out at the end part. Oh, sorry if you guys couldn't see. I was trying to show you and I end up getting out of view. Okay. Okay, so now with this part, I'll take it through and hold the jump ring. And just pull it down. Smooth it out the best that I can. Here we go. It's attached. So now I go back over this piece right here. And I accidentally push down. The thing I could fix it. And then it'll go like that. I'll just put a jump ring through there. And as a matter of fact, let me make, hmm, I just thought about that. I don't know if I want to make, well, I guess I'll have to I'll make a hole like right there for the jump ring to go through. I also noticed that this jump ring is going forward too much, so I'm going to lie it flat on the table and then Push it down with my needle tool just to make it level. Okay. So now I gotta decide where I want jump ring hole on here. And I think okay. I'm hoping you guys can see this. Let me stand up and look to make sure in the camera that you guys can see me. Okay. So, I think that I'm going to make it well. Right there. Let's see. I don't know if that's too far back. I'm going to turn it over, go through the front, I hope it didn't smash it down, okay. There we go. Now, I did have one more little cabochon I thought about putting on there. Bring it like right there. It keeps looking like that rhinestone is out. Okay, there we go. What about putting that there? I think it would look nice. Oop. But I don't know if I should make it 
2004 it let's see so I'm gonna roll a ball of clay around in my hand like that I'm gonna use a ball tool this time I have one that it's the perfect size right here Then tweezers to pick it up. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. We need something flat to push it down in there. I should have glued it. Mm. Okay guys, so this is what I came up with. I'm going to put this one up here. And I made the um, bezel smaller. And then I'm going to put three rhinestones going up there. And I'll show you how I did the other two. So I just grabbed them with tweezers, dipped them in liquid clay on the back and then set them where I want them make sure they're lined up there like that and then I'm going to take this ball tool and I'm going to one second guys okay I'm back I'm going to take this ball tool, push them down just a little bit into the clay. There we go. And then I got to glue this one on there. So liquid clay. Okay, let me get some of this cleaned up because I have stuff everywhere <laughs> and we'll come back and we'll put the mic on. I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. So, I just tested here on the back how I wanted to do it. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it with the soft tool because it gets, it doesn't always get exactly where I want it. So I just have some mica powder dumped off here. And I'm going to tap it onto the soft tool and dab off the excess. And just go across it lightly. I might use my finger. Let's see what it looks like with my finger. Dab off the excess so you don't get a bunch in one spot. Sorry for the noise, guys. My dog is eating. Took him for a walk to the park earlier and it wore him out. He hasn't ate all day. Been sleeping in the sun all day, so now he's hungry.
Okay, so you guys get the, the gist of it. <laughs> so, this video is so long. It may even be a three-parter. I hate to do that to you guys, but I like for you guys to see, you know, all of my process. And most of the people that watch me, that's what they like to see too, so. Dab off the excess. And I'm just going to go across long ways just to see what kind of coverage I'm going to get. Plus, I don't want to get it. If I get it down in the crevices a little bit, that's okay. But I don't want to get it all down in there because I want to have that some of that background showing through too. And I'm going to dab some. Set the tip of the soft tool so that I can color in the rope. Bless you, buddy. Do the same. Just go around the top lightly. I'm barely pressing down because I don't want it to get, like I said, and all of the crevices. Oh, that is so nice. I am so proud of myself. Gonna dip some more. Tap off the excess. Again, I'm gonna start on this side and go around. We'll see. Well, I love that black background showing through that just I love that look we'll do a little bezel here for the small labradorite Okay, I need some on the very tip of the soft tool again to get string rope, whatever you want to call it, colored. Colored? I don't know that's what I was trying to say. Covered. <laughs> and mm, I don't know if I want to let's see, let's let's leave. I'm going to try to leave the bigger one black and let's see if we can just do smaller rope. I think that'll look nice. And I'm not worried about the mica, get, mica powder getting on the cabochon because it's already baked. Oh yeah, I think I'm going to be able to make it work. I'm so happy with this. This was completely from start to finish. You guys saw me came up with it or come up with it. I didn't practice this beforehand. I just had a vision in my head and went with it. That's how I'm gonna leave that. That's freaking nice. Okay. So now, instant. tap off the excess. Let me blow on the. Oh, 
Uh, the reason, oh, see, I didn't know if I wanted to get it on there, but now that I did, I was going to say the reason why I'm going across this really lightly, because I didn't want to get it on there. I wasn't sure if I wanted to, but I done got it on there, so I guess we are. <laughs> I'll try not to get in on this part. Let's see how that looks. Well, I like it with the texture. That looks nice. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to color it. With the mica powder, that's not, I don't think that's going to look right. Tap off the excess. I'm not worried about it going on the rhinestones. I, I can get that off later. I think I got a little too much on there. I hope some of it comes off when it bakes. Let's get down the sides here. These ones. Oh, I got it right there. I can get it off with the Q-tip though. Sorry about the noise, guys. And I'm just going to go lightly across this because I feel like I got way too much mica powder on there. Get some of it off. Yeah, there we go. Clean off the rhinestones. Okay. How are we looking? Okay, so because of the way they're setting in the Clay, these rhinestones look like they're not even. They look like they're in the wrong place, which is not the case. It's just the way they're setting in the clay. Which I'm not happy about. So let me see if I can fix this really quickly. Well, what do you guys think? I think it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. Um, yeah, these rhinestones are throwing me off here. Okay guys, so now I'm going to bake this. It'll be 275 for an hour, of course. Let me get the sides here. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, here's the finished piece. I think it turned out really nice. I named it Atlas, of course. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, share. Let me know if there's anything that you want to see. And I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you soon. Thank you.